Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Ready, Set, Thrive. My name is Stacey Soleil, your host, and I'm very excited to bring to the stage today Ulysses Vega, who is the broker owner of the Excellence Real Estate Vega team. Uh, welcome. Uh, so Thank glad you. that you're here. Um, I want to give a little bit of backstory on our wonderful guest. Um, so in I, let me see if I get all these facts straight. Um, in 2019, this team grossed over 23 million in GCI, placing them yes. number three overall in the company, which is yes. the excellent real estate, excellence real estate, Correct. and um, number one in um, agent production for your region. So congratulations! What a what a great uh, way to kick off, uh, you know, that year. And you and I were just talking backstage a little bit about, you know heading into Q4 and finishing strong and, and having that, that mindset around uh, generating success when people tend to, you know, get close to the holidays and slow down a little bit. Um, we were talking a little bit about your methodology. So uh, just to kind of get things started, it would be great if you can just give everybody a little bit of background about you and how you came into the industry and a little bit just about the man before we talk about the legend. Let's know about the man. Oh my goodness. Well, Stacy, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be uh, in your awesome show. I've, I've seen uh, previous episodes and I was like, wow, that's an exciting show. And maybe one day I'll be a part of it without even remotely thinking that it was going to come into fruition before the end of the year. So super excited to, uh, to be here. And uh, to answer your question, I've been in this amazing industry for 16 years. Um, I enjoy every minute of it. Uh, it's been fun. I love helping people. Um, but a lot of people ask me, did you ever dream of becoming a broker owner? And the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> I became a broker out of default. What do I mean by that? I became a broker out of necessity because unfortunately the ones that I had or, or worked for, which I'm not going to mention any names, they were not really supportive. They didn't bring a whole lot to the table. And I always would say, wow, if I would have a little bit more support, I wonder what I could do. And then I would see agents that I felt had a lot of talent leave or quit the business and they would go back to a regular nine to five. And I would say, wow, if that would have been me as a broker, I would have given him or her a little bit more training, more mentoring. I would have guided them more and it, it, all of that started bottling up. And I would say, you know what, why do I, if I want change, I guess I could start by changing it myself. Yeah. And I started researching what do I need to, to do to become a broker and what do I need to do and what licenses and long story short, I'm going on four and a half years with my broker license um, and it's been a fun ride. It has not been easy. I don't have a rich father. I don't come from a rich family that gave me everything and said, done. Here's uh, two hundred thousand dollars. Go go open an office and be successful. Um, when you become a broker or an owner, Stacy, there's no manual that you get so that you can figure everything out. Like if you have any questions on how to become a broker and pay your own overhead, go to chapter twenty-two. It doesn't happen. You gotta well, kind of learn. I, I think it go. comes down to mentorship, right? So yeah, if you yeah. if you surround yourself with people that say, "Hey, this was what I did to generate my success," and this is sort of the roadmap that I followed, um, you know, if you'd like to, you know, come along on this this journey, here's the map, right? And then, of course, you can get behind the driver's wheel, and how you navigate is up to yes. you. But exactly. having that, yeah. So even even when I opened my my broker light my my office. I really wasn't given a whole lot of mentoring. All I was told was go get yourself a lease and start recruiting. And I'm like, holy cow, I've never recruited anybody. How do I, I mean, you start questioning, are people going to want to join me? You know, are, are people going to want to work for me, with me, alongside me? What about my personality? Do I have what it takes? So did I second guess myself? Yes, I'm human like everybody else. Sure, sure. But but you had to outweigh the 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 willingness to succeed overcame the fear of what if I fail? And I said, well, I won't know if I fail until I try. And I went all out. And four and a half years later, I'm in your beautiful show talking <laughs> about my story. So, well, that's really that's really cool. So I wanted to, you know, one of the things that drew me to you when we were kind of making decisions about, you know, who should we bring on as a guest is we were talking a little bit about, you know, the whole mindset around thriving and what it takes to generate success. And, um, you know, people come to their success 
different ways. You know, there's not one way to be successful. Um, You know, there's, there's different ways that people create that path for themselves and for those that they surround themselves with. And one of the things that um, really compelled me was that you said that you felt really motivated to help others in the sense that you saw that there was a lot of, you know, young people coming into the industry that were hungry and that wanted to become successful, but felt a little lost. And so you wanted to mentor and educate. And so um, I'd like to kind of start here, if you don't mind, I'd love to talk a little bit about what would you say? Because I think you had said to me that you have some ideas about what agents can do for the first 100 days that they're in the business. They just got themselves started. So let's start off with, I love, I love the number three. I love starting off like, what are the three things that you would say to somebody that's getting started? What three well, things would they need to do to kind of maximize their, their, their success as they get started? I'm glad that you mentioned about the 100 days because your first 100 days in the industry is going to set the tempo for for everything else moving forward. So one of the things that I would tell everybody that's tuning in, that just got licensed, about to get licensed is first and foremost, check your ego at the door and allow somebody like myself to mold you into the superstar that you were meant to be. Um, Don't try to reinvent the wheel because the wheel is already there. Just embrace do things that might be uncomfortable. And what do I mean by that? Um, I trained agents that that went from zero to closing 18 to 20 transactions in their first full year. And they had never done 30 to $40,000 in, in income in a year and did 140 in their first year. So it can be done. That must but have felt really good to help somebody is, to change their path like that. Yes. Yes. Because to me, as a broker owner, nothing gives me greater reward and and a, a bigger blessing is that making those around me better because that's what a leader should do. So if somebody's watching and they just got licensed, one of the things that I would tell them is make sure that you position yourself with somebody that that has your back, somebody that's going to go to war and go to battle for you, mm-hmm. somebody that's going to partner with you because at the end of the day, you're as good as those around you. Uh, make sure you embrace social media, mm. embrace videos. And you, you do a lot of videos and I love, I love your social media presence. And I think that's one of the things that also drew me to your, your show and, 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 and how you connect with leaders all around the United States. It's, it's your ability to connect and your, your social media presence, your, your video presence. And, and I tell everybody, if you overcome the fear of that red little button when you record, you're going to connect with people because people buy and do business with people they like. Yeah. I can put a post about a picture and say, if you want to buy a house, please contact me. There is no emotion whatsoever. But if I do a video and I say, hello, everyone, this is Ulises. I'm coming at you live from Fontana. Super excited to be here. Now you heard me. Now you saw my emotion. Now you're like, wow, I love his energy. I love his passion. He seems like he knows what he's doing. He's, he seems he's knowledgeable. So I would tell everybody, embrace social media, embrace videos, the perfect video does not exist because a lot of times we record a video and I will tell my agents, hey, what about that beautiful video that you you did at the office? Oh, I didn't like it. Why not? I didn't like the ways my, my, my voice sounded. And I said, you have to embrace you. Before people love you, you have to love you. Yeah. No, I've, so been told, I've been told I have an accent. I have curly, messy hair. My goatee's turning white. Do I look like 20 years ago? Probably not, but I've learned to embrace myself at my age. So well, before somebody hires me, I have to hire me. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. And actually one of my my favorite, um, I guess, objection overcomers to somebody that says, I don't really want to do video. I don't like the way I look or the way I sound. I've done a million times, absolutely. Right. So if, if anyone is tuning in to this, um, either live or re- rebroadcast, and, and we've met before, you've heard me say this before. If you were in your office and somebody came through the front door and they were curious about a home that they saw or they want to go look for a home, would you say, hey, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I don't look good today. Come back later. Oh, I don't like my voice. Don't talk to me. Of course not. We would never Probably do that. Not. Exactly. Definitely not. We would just jump right into the moment and we'd have regardless our conversation. Regardless of what we look like, regardless of yeah. how our hair, our makeup, our shirt. Yeah. And I always tell everybody, if a picture is worth a thousand words, imagine what a video does. 
Yeah. Especially in this ever changing market. I mean, we've 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 been we've been going through a very tough 2020, something that we've never in a million years would have well, imagined. A hundred years at least. <laughs> or, yeah. in, in our lifetime, we haven't seen something like this. Yeah. So it has been a lot easier to connect with people, potential clients, sellers, buyers, agents through the beautiful art of a video. I mean, we are in a different state. And I feel like you're in the office right next to mine through the art of a video. Yeah. So it, 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 I would tell I would tell people embrace videos, embrace how you look like. If you have an accent, embrace it because that means that you can connect with other people that have an accent. If you have curly hair, people are gonna realize, oh my God, he's not, you know, he looks like me. You know, well, yeah, I can relate I mean, to him. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to you know when you're when you're trying to connect with somebody using whatever form you're using, whether it's video, whether it's. You know, it's just, you know, asking yourself, who am I trying to connect with? Absolutely. And, you know, if, if you're, you know, a realtor that says, oh, um, you know, I really have a heart for working with um, empty nesters, people that, you know, their kids have all moved mm -hmm. out and they're, they're looking to downsize. And I, I'd like to help them find their forever, you know, finish, you know, their, their golden years together home, mm -hmm. then you would have a different audience. You would be cultivating that conversation for that audience, right? And or I'm maybe, glad you touched on that. Yeah. Because maybe you have to younger. know your target audience. For sure. Yeah. So so knowing how you you relate to people is going to be largely contingent on who you're talking to, not about you. It's not about you. It's no, really it's not, not. Yeah. It's about them. It's it's about yeah. it's about the person on the other end. So yeah. we have to know who who are we trying to reach. Another thing that I would tell somebody within the first 100 days is don't try to be all, all things to all people. Mm, Don't try to please point. everybody. Don't be a people pleaser because not that I'm trying to be bad, but you're not going to please everybody. And when you learn to realize that you're not going to get every buyer lead, you're not going to get every seller lead, not everybody's going to love you. It's okay. Do I want to be for everybody? No. Am I for everybody? Absolutely not. A lot of people are going to be, well, this guy's too energetic. He's too high tempo. Yeah, I am. But some people are going to gravitate towards that. Yeah. And those are the ones I want to capture. And those that feel I'm too much for them, I love you. If you want to join me, I love you. And if you don't want to join me, I love you too. Well, okay. I mean, it, everything's everything in life is is that about that magnet force, right? And so Ooh. who how we are, we we are attracting to uh, exactly. you know other people, you know. Like that's why I always say um like I'll have clients who are very serious or very quiet and maybe they're shy. And so getting on video or even being out there on social media feels oh very gosh, overwhelming. That's, that's, yeah, it is. It's like terrifying. And so one of the things well, I, I like, heard, the, the funny thing about it is that I heard that uh, public speaking, a lot of people categorize it just below dying. The fear of <laughs> well, dying. I mean, and yeah. right, right at the bottom is public speaking. Yeah. It's that overwhelming feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm being watched. What are they going to think of me? Mm -hmm. Are they going to laugh? Yeah. What if I say the wrong thing? It's who cares? Just be you, and 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 those that gravitate towards your your weirdness are gonna join you. It takes yeah. a village, right? Well, and, and like I was saying, you know, if even if you are somebody who's a little bit more shy or a little bit more analytical or serious, um, you don't have to have a high energy to be on video yeah. or to be on social because the type of people that are gonna be drawn to you are going to want somebody who's more serious, more analytical. So just being true to who you are does create that that result that, that you're looking bitch. for. So, so let me just sort of um, recap, just so I make sure I like nice, neat little bullet points. So the three things that you recommend is, is aligning with somebody who has your back, who's a good partner. So, so choosing a partnership that's going to uh, be supportive as you start your journey. Second one is to um, really embrace using social media as a means to enhance and build your relationships. Absolutely. And then third, getting comfortable with using video as a way to build a more personal connection with your clientele. So that's and, and a, cl a close fourth, I would say, a lot of times realtors, when they get into the business and they pass their license, they feel that they have to align themselves with a major company. I was with a major brand for eight years. I'm not going to say the name, but that brand did zero for me. So at the end of the day, people buy from people they like. When they hired Ulysses, it wasn't because of the brand. It was because they loved my energy, because I sold the neighbor's house, because I was putting 70 open house signs every time I did an open house. It wasn't about the brand. So 
you get what you pay for. If you want to bark and, and and be with the big boys, expect to pay the big boy fees and expect to pay franchise fees and desk fees and toilet paper fees. So you might wanna, <laughs> believe me, they might, they might have them. They just don't want to put them under toilet paper fees. So watch out, world. You might want to align yourself with a company that's more of a boutique that's going to have time for you that you're going to actually be able to talk to the broker or the manager instead of the assistant to the assistant. That is a with something like, like, like the Vega team. We cater to agents that are starting up and we develop them and we give them all the tools, the training, we help them lead generate. A lot of, a lot of these new agents, they go to companies that promised them the world. Oh, I promised you free leads. And without getting religious, I tell my agents, do you want me, do, do you want to, do you want me to give you a fish for, for one day or do you want me to teach you how to fish for a lifetime? Mm. A, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of buyers, a lot of people go to the, the companies that promise them free leads, but they don't tell you how they got those leads. I teach my agents how to generate their own leads so that they don't depend on me. I don't want my agents to need me. I want my agents to be here because they love being around me and we've developed this camaraderie, this family vibe, this culture not because, oh my God, I don't know how to generate business and I need my broker. Yeah. I don't want them to need me. I want them to be here because we've 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 started something special. Right. So that would be a close fourth. I think that's a good fourth. Are, by any chance, are, are you a parent yourself? Absolutely. I have two beautiful okay. kids. I have an 11-year-old and I have my 13-year-old princess. And being a parent is not easy. Yeah. It well, I was not saying, easy. I, I, it, it almost sounded to me what I was hearing was that like that, that mindset is almost like that really good father, right? Where, you know, I, I, if I did everything for you, how are you going to learn how to be a successful, competent yeah. adult yourself one day? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and I had again, a feeling, I was like, I bet you he's a dad. He's got some dad vibe going on here. So. <laughs> I, that's, I think out of, out of all, out of all the titles that I've ever been blessed, I think father is the most gratifying one because again, it's, now it's not about it's about that life and yeah. nurturing them and developing them and giving all giving them all the tools so that one day they could be successful uh, citizens. They can be, you know, amazing human beings and they make those around them better. That's what I want my kids to be. Yeah, yeah. So the, your your family members are are in a, a essence your your professional children in a way. Yeah. And <laughs> so, as, as a matter of fact, I tell my agents, I love when when they say how many agents do you have. I said, well, my agents are like my kids. I have 24 children. Yeah. Because a handful. <laughs> I, I, I protect them. I make sure that nobody harms them. I make sure that I give them all the tools they need. And if they have a tough situation, a tough transaction, and I have to step in and regulate, I will protect my children at any cost. And that's something that I never had that as a broker. I had to fight my own battles. And I would tell my broker, hey, somebody else on the other transaction is trying to bully me. I had to fight my own battles. My agents don't have to do that because they have me. Right. Right. That's good. So, so this is a great transition. So one of the things I also wanted to ask you is what three traits here I am with that number three, again, what three traits would you say are what you would look for when you're trying to identify somebody who you think is, had the potential to be a successful agent? What three traits do you tend to see in a person that is trainable, coachable, and, and able to generate their success? You've all, you've clearly done it already. If you've helped people grow from, 41,000 to 137,000. So, so what well, are those I think, things? I think first and foremost, be coachable. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, as newer agents, um, we sometimes let our egos get the best of us and we mm -hmm. feel that we don't need the broker just because we close two or three transactions. We, we, we own the world and now I don't need you. I could do my own thing. And it's like, you never stop learning. I've been in this amazing industry for 16 years and I'm always trying to add more to to my arsenal yeah the minute that you feel that you know it all that's the day that you start going backwards yeah so i'm, I'm in the midst of getting my nmls lending license i want to open a mortgage division i don't i'm never satisfied with what i have i'm appreciative of what i've been able to have but i'm never satisfied i always want more yeah if we close 50 transactions well shoot why don't we do 100 once we do 100, well, hey, why don't we do 200? The sky's the limit. Never settle for anything or anybody. So definitely got that that growth mindset about you. Yes, always, always. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm obsessed with, with personal development. Another thing is 
you know, check your ego at the door. Uh, allow yourself to be coachable. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, be ethical. I think that's a, a huge one because you can produce, you can bring business, but if you're shady and unethical, I don't want to be near you. Yeah, well, um, it doesn't work out in the long run, especially, exactly. you know, there's, there's, there's too many, too many T's to cross and I's to dot. You don't, you don't want to, and, and uh, it, it, this is, well, any industry is this way, really. It's but common sense. Yeah. You're I mean, always going to reconnect. I want to be able to sleep well at night. I don't want the FBI, the FBI coming at my door at three in the morning because I did some loan fraud or I defrauded a client. I mean, in, in 16 years, my license has been spotless, no disciplinary actions. When I opened my broker license and I open, we have our own DRE, Department of Real Estate approved escrow division, spotless, no act, no disciplinary actions, never a complaint. Because again, I always treat the client like my own. Before I got licensed, my parents had three horrible real estate experiences. And I was like, wow, that would have never happened if that would have been me as a realtor. When my parents bought their first house, guess what? Do you think the realtor met us at the house to give us the, the keys and take a picture with a soul sign? No. My dad had to drive 50 miles to pick up the keys at their office. What, what year was that? This was the first one that they bought was 97. The second one was 2001. And I was like, wait a minute. I've seen other people take pictures with a soul and the realtor smiling. Yeah, that's, How come we didn't get that. Yeah, of that's, course, I, I, think you, I think you got robbed because I, I know that customer service sure has did. definitely been around during those times. So all of that stuff started bottling up. And I would say, man, if that would have been me, that would have never happened to this beautiful family. So I got into real estate after my mom passed away in 2005. I wanted to do something completely different. Yeah. My background was music. I was a singer, songwriter, musician. That was what I did. So ah. to me, being, yes. So to me being in front of a mic, uh, going onto a listing appointment in front of a husband and wife, it's like, I got this. Yeah. So, but I wanted to do something completely different. I said, well, I want to help people. I want to help people. In, in, in areas where my family didn't didn't get help. So I want to be yeah. that realtor that I never got to see. And yeah. then I wanted to be the broker that I never got to see because nobody mentored me. And I said, well, if I can sell 50, 60, 70 houses by myself with no training, no mentoring, no broker support, no social media, I wonder how many houses can my agents sell with me on their corner? Yeah. And that's kind of what started the Vega team movement. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's interesting because we tend to be motivated by uh, the experiences that we've had in our life, whether those yeah. were really positive experiences that, you know, made us want to do more or, you know, challenging situations that make yeah. us want to do things differently to, to create a different outcome for others, you know, yeah. and it sounds like, you know, you, you saw that your family had, you know, some unfortunate situations that they, you said, oh, I'm never going to let that happen again. Not on my watch. Right. Exactly. So every time I meet with a seller that wants to sell their house or somebody that wants to buy and they're like, Oh, but you don't understand. We, my family has had some bad experiences. I tell them, Oh, I know what you, I know what you, what you went through because my parents went through the same thing. And I was 12, 14 years old. And I was like, why does my dad have to drive 40 miles to get the keys? Didn't the realtor that helped my parents get a commission check? Why couldn't he drive 40 miles to give us the keys? So you were, you were, you were 12 or 13. Yeah, yeah, and you, I remember. That's interesting. So and, that left a pretty lasting impression on you. Yeah. Because we were waiting for that wow moment where that realtor of us was going to be like the hero with a cape and coming flying <laughs> with a soul sign and said, here you go, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer. We were cheated out of that moment. It's like going to, going to college, going to high school, and you didn't go, you didn't walk on stage and get your diploma. You got cheated out of that wow opportunity. Well, we got cheated out of opening the door to our house and that congratulations. We missed out on that. So every time I, I do that for a family, I Im immediately turn into that 12 year old kid that yeah. wish we would have experienced that. So to me, it's not about the paycheck. Commissions and money come and go. Yeah. What's priceless is being able to he family you know what you've impacted my life and i was like oh my gosh yeah that's huge that that with you forever yeah well and it's interesting because if you if it if you had an experience that created such a lasting effect that kind of 
pivoted and allowed you to make decisions in your career, it makes you think of all the different families as, you know, as real estate professionals, we're dealing with families every day all the time. Um, and, and those children and how they are going to be affected by what you bring to the table. You know, we think, yeah, we, that's, it's a really interesting point, Ulysses, that, yeah. you know, we think about wanting to make sure that um, you were impressing the, the you know, the, the client, meaning the, the, the husband and wife or, or whoever the owners are of that home. Yeah. Yeah. But that being said, there is that silent client, which is the child who's watching, paying attention, who's going to one day be a client as well. That generational that, marketing, right? I'm glad yeah. you touched on that because now I'm helping the children of my clients and I helped them when I first got licensed. And I'm thinking, that's amazing. That's a blessing. But wait a minute, that that means I'm getting old. Yeah. No, it's that's we don't use the O word. No, we we're getting better. Getting, we're just getting better. Yeah, we're just we're getting, getting wiser. Yeah. I like that. I'm gonna take a page out of out of, out of Stacey's booklet. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that word is. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> so, I love that. I'm, I'm gonna, next time I do a video and, I, and somebody tells me how old are you, brokers don't age. No, we just get better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I mean, gotta, honestly, I, I kind of agree it. with it because I think that every year that I am fortunate enough to be here, Amen. that I look back and I think, wow, I like me better this year than I did last year. I've learned so much. I don't want, I, I like the, it's like, like the, it, your iteration stages of like, you know, the product development, right? Where the latest version of iPhone, it does so much more than that original version. I don't right? know how many latest versions of me I can stand. I'm going to share something really quick. It's probably a minute. <laughs> when my goatee started going wide, my daughter looked at me like, 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 like if somebody had passed away and she goes, daddy, what happened to your, your beard? And I said, oh. what do you mean? And she, she looked at me like her superhero passed away. She goes, you're getting old and you're you're turning white. Are you gonna are you gonna dye it or paint it? And I said, that's part of the aging process. She goes, oh, Aww. like with this with this like dissatisfaction because she was hoping that this was gonna go away. It's it's a mask. Let me remove it. And and sometimes she looks at me. She goes, I think you should dye. And I was like, no, but I'm gonna look weird. Oh, how old is she? She's she just turned thirteen and oh, she's yeah, well. going on thirty. Of course, of course. Yeah, that's she knows so funny. Her all. I love her to death. She's my mini me, but my goodness, sometimes um, it's the it can age. Be, it can be challenging being a parent to a, a, a beautiful thirteen-year-old daughter. Uh, that yeah, we, we those of us that have have had teenagers, we 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 can relate. Trust me on that. And so, kids and daughters are completely different because my son and my daughter have different personalities, like night and day. Even though he's changing and he's into gaming and all that stuff, but. Uh, she's more of the this and this and that. And I'm like, you're a boss lady. I want you to, you know, I want you to run a company one day. She's, or gonna, run, she's gonna run your company one day. Watch out. I would love that. I wouldn't <laughs> mind. I mean, I, I, I'm all about girl power and empowering women because my mom was my hero and my daughter, I feel that she she can be an amazing woman, an amazing leader uh, one day. And it starts with mindset. Yeah, I know it does. Well, that's really cool. So, um, you are also currently um, serving a VP role with NARUP, right? The National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. That uh, is correct, yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, you know, how taking on a leadership role with NARUP has has kind of changed your uh, perspective on, on how you lead. Because I know a lot of great leaders have come up through the organization. And I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, what you're doing with this role and, and how it's affected your journey. Well, um, to be honest with you, NAREP, it's for those of you that have never heard of it or haven't been involved, I would encourage everybody to look into it. There's there's probably a chapter in, in every major city in, in, in the United States, so I would encourage everybody to look into it. Um, a lot of people tell me, well, do I have to be Latino or do I have to be speak, uh, speak Spanish to join NAREP? Absolutely not. Um, have you ever serviced a buyer or a seller that was of Hispanic descendant? Yes. Okay, well, guess what? You've impacted a Hispanic, a Latino, get a piece of the American dream. So I would encourage you to join NAREP. So to answer your question, the movement of NAREP is basically um, promoting sustainable and affordable homeownership. 
Okay. Not just to Latinos, but to everybody that's ever dreamed of owning a home. If you're an immigrant for from every walk of life, you've dreamed of owning real estate in this beautiful country. I don't care if you were born from Mexico, Central America, South America, Europe, the Middle East. You you've owned and you've dreamed of one day we're going to own a house. One day we're going to have a house. And one day is now. So I love helping people. This organization is led by amazing leaders, um, starting with our co-founder, Gary Acosta, Armando Tam, Jerry Asensio. And I'm just blessed to be alongside uh, my current president, Kevin James Gonzalez, who's our 2020 president. And God willing, next year, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll get a chance to lead my, my SoCal Inland Empire chapter. We are in the Inland Empire. And it's a, it's a, it's a growing community. And again, our goal is to, to promote sustainable and affordable home ownership to those that have ever dreamed of owning a home. Who hasn't? Right. Well, the, yeah. The, and the NARP associations are, are, are fantastic. And by the way, can throw the best parties. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Let's, let's be I honest. Miss, I, miss, I miss last year's uh, NARP convention in San Diego. It was amazing. Yes. And one of the things that you mentioned, how has NARP positioned my business to thrive? the amazing connections that you make. Mm -hmm. You honestly, you go to a NAREP convention, you go to a NAREP chapter event, and you feel like you're talking to a family member. If you're from a chapter in your community, even though we've never met, I see your NAREP pin, immediately I'm going to hug you and be like, oh my God, how you been? It's yeah. that brotherhood. It's that, 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 and that sisterhood. family vibe. And yes, exactly. Good. And yeah. so to me, um, I've, I've been able to help um, friends and relatives from other NARA members from New York, from Atlanta, from Florida, from North Carolina, um, because we have a network of referrals. So sometimes they would say, hey, I need a realtor in Fontana. Who is a broker in Fontana that's a NARA member? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, Ulysses. And immediately we start chatting and they're like, hey, can you take care of my cousin? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I never joined NARIB to see how that could benefit me. It was kind of like what, what our, 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 our beautiful president, uh, John Kennedy said, don't, don't ask what, what this beautiful country could do for you, but what could you, what could you do for this country? And I didn't join NARIB to, to ask NARIB, what can NARIB do for me? I joined NARIB to see how the heck can I help NARIB grow and go from 100 chapters to 200 chapters. Um, I want that. I, yeah. I'm passionate about the movement. I love people. And uh, again, if we can if we can help more renters buy a home, that's going to create wealth. That's going to help our bottom line. That's going to help our state, our country, our economy. Yeah. And we're going to help more people build wealth. Yeah, that's amazing. So any any organization that that has that those principles, I'm all about it. Yeah, well, Absolutely. I'm passionate I, about I, it. Can you I, tell? I, I, well, I love that you're passionate about it. I love I love being around people that are passionate about whatever it is Absolutely. that is their driving force. You know, whatever it is Absolutely. that makes you feel like this is what I get out of bed for in the morning. This is what gets me going. Um, yeah. it's, it's that's why this whole concept of the show is to surround yourself with people that truly. Are, are finding ways to thrive and that are motivated and um, and want to just share that with others. So, so thank you for coming on and sharing. Um, so yeah, we appreciate you. the tips. And um, I'd like to just before we um, sign off here, I just want to kind of put on the screen here. If you're interested to uh, connect with Ulysses and, you know, maybe you have some more questions that you didn't get a chance to ask him, go ahead and go ahead and uh, connect with him on uh, Facebook because I know you're super active on the network yeah. here and um, he's a fun guy to connect with I appreciate either direction. It. So, um, and, and they, can, they can follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, The Vega Team. You can follow my YouTube channel, Ulysses Vega Realtor, Twitter. Any question, uh, I'm not going to bombard you and blow up your phone about recruiting. If somebody has any questions and they feel that um, they want to get their license or maybe they're already licensed and they feel lost, neglected, and about to quit and give up. Find out what the Vega team can do for your career. I'd love to position you in a way that you can thrive in any industry, including this one. 
That's thank very, you once again. Thank you. That's very generous of you. Of so course. thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, everybody, thank who's you, tuned you. in live today. And if you're catching the rebroadcast, thank you so much for taking the time to stop the scroll and check out the stream. Next week, I'm going to be bringing on an amazing guest who's a brilliant marketer, as well as a amazing ultra runner. Um, so talking about mindset and the consumer journey, my, my uh, colleague, Larry Hales. So tune in next week, uh, Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard. And until then, thank you, everyone. And thank you for sharing Bye, your everybody. time. Get ready, set, thrive. Bye now. Bye-bye.